Good evening everyone and welcome to our evening service. You may be wondering why I'm not with you tonight and instead I'm doing a video uh, of uh, a wonderful view of Arran uh, down here at the beach. Well my confession is this that uh, way back in March when it was Anna's birthday I bought her a ticket to go and see Le Mis at the Hydro and it was for a Sunday evening and it so happens that it is uh, tonight that uh, the showing the performance is at the Hydro and so uh, it was also our anniversary this week so that is where I am uh, this evening and I thought it was unfair I was a bit last minute I thought it was unfair to ask anyone else to do a reflection and I had something on my heart uh, to share with you anyway and so that's why we're going to do just a, a video reflection tonight so I'm grateful uh, to David for uh, leading the service this evening thank you to the uh, praise group as well uh, but we are going to spend a little bit of time uh, tonight uh, having a bit of a reflection uh, on the passage that we have read uh, and a few other passages uh, also. Now a couple of evening services ago we thought about a very famous verse which is John chapter 6 verse 29 where Jesus speaks about uh, the works of the Lord and how to please the Lord. Uh, and he says that the works of the Lord is to believe in the one in whom he is sent. In other words, he doesn't expect us to work for our salvation because we don't believe in uh, works that save us. Uh, there's nothing that we can do that is good enough uh, to save us before an almighty God. Uh, rather, we have to believe and trust in the Lord Jesus. Now, what I want to think about tonight is sometimes we think well belief you know once we believe in Jesus and we have faith in him uh, then that's the end of the story that we have uh, reached the end of uh, what faith is all about and sometimes people think that they think that when they're converted uh, then that is they, they've reached the destination but for those who have been a Christian for a long time you will know that that is not the case that actually it's only the beginning of the journey and what I want to think a little bit about tonight is how do we live out the Christian life what does the Christian life uh, look like because I, I believe that we can often fall into two traps when it comes to the Christian life the first trap is that we can think to ourselves well I believe in the Lord Jesus and because I believe in the Lord Jesus then that's the end and I can just do what I like in my life and sometimes we can fall into that that temptation that you know I believed and trusted in Jesus therefore I'm forgiven and therefore it doesn't matter what I do but I think as we'll see tonight that is a very false way of looking at things the second trap that we can often fall into is that we can regress in our faith and even though we know that Jesus has died for our sins on the cross past present and future we can fall back into believing that salvation is all about works we can we can fall back into kind of trying to earn our way uh, with God and so we have both of these temptations and what I want to think about tonight is, well, how do we live a Christian life? How do we avoid these pitfalls? And so this evening, as we spend a, a few moments reflecting together, uh, we're going to think just a little bit uh, about some of these things. Now tonight we're going to have a look at this passage in Ephesians chapter 2 and we're going to think uh, about verses 1 to 10 but really we're going to focus upon uh, verses 9 and 10 or really 8, uh, 9 and 10. Uh, first of all you have verses 8 and 9 where 
Paul makes it clear to the Ephesians that they have been saved not by their works but they have been saved by grace and that is grasped by faith and Paul wants to remind the Ephesians of this because this is really the, the most important thing uh, in terms of salvation that we cannot save ourselves that no matter how good we think we are that we can never live up to God's perfect standards but the wonderful thing is as we've seen all throughout those uh, first 10 uh, verses is that God has done something amazing that he has given his only begotten son that he has given the Lord Jesus and Jesus pays the price for our sin on the cross at Calvary and Jesus is a gift of grace a gift of grace God wanted to give us the Lord Jesus sometimes we think uh, that God is a mean God uh, or that we have to force his hand in some ways but really God is a gracious loving compassionate God and when we were in the misery of our sin God sent the Lord Jesus to pay for our sin that we might be forgiven and that we might be set free and so Jesus is a gift of grace and we grasp this gift by faith that's what we thought about from John chapter 6 verse 29 that we looked at uh, a couple of evening services ago because in that verse we see that salvation is not about working harder or, or trying harder or trying uh, our best every every single day and going on and on and on it's not about that at all it's simply believing it's having faith in the Lord Jesus so that's the first thing I want us to, to remember tonight because so often in our lives even when we've trusted in the Lord Jesus we can then think to ourselves hold on a second if I'm living out the, the Christian life then, then I have to be a, a good person I've got to do certain uh, good things and, and sometimes that can we can drift can't we into thinking that it's actually these good things that we do that bring us salvation that it's like kind of currency in the bank so to speak but we have to be brought back again and again to remember that salvation is all of grace it's all about what Jesus has done and we cannot earn our way with God so the, the first thing I want us just to, to reflect on tonight is that so often we can fall back into into ways of thinking you know I've got to earn my way I've got to be a, a, a good person in my life and sometimes we get that uh, the wrong way around as we'll see when we get to, to verse 10 but we need to be assured in our lives that faith is sufficient faith in the Lord Jesus is sufficient for our salvation that nothing else is needed and that's the first thing I want us just to, to reflect upon this evening because if we get into a mindset of we have to work harder or we've got to do more then that will grind us down and we will find uncertainty in our faith because when we begin to live a kind of works righteousness then what tends to happen is oh I'm not good enough therefore I've got to strive harder and you end up in this cycle of despair this cycle of failure so we have to remember that salvation it's all about faith in the Lord Jesus and it is something that is grasped by faith in him. Now the second thing is the main thing that I want to have a wee think about tonight and that is once we have been saved how do we therefore live out the Christian life because this is an area I think that that maybe we don't think about enough that we can you know lead people through the Alpha course for example and people can come to faith in the Lord Jesus but then they kind of grapple around and they think well what's next 
And we can be quite guilty, I think, in the church of thinking, well, you know, we've led them through something like the Alpha Course, uh, therefore we expect them to, to come to church and to, to, you know, live out their faith and, and just to grasp what the Christian faith is by osmosis. Whereas actually, one of the things that I think is key in the church is we need to, to think a lot about discipleship and especially discipleship of those who are new to the faith. Now, once we put our faith in the Lord Jesus, what then are we to be? Well, for those who have done the Alpha Course, you might remember um, the, the Pope's personal preacher who appears in some of the videos. He especially speaks uh, about the Holy Spirit. And one of the things he says about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit changes nothing and yet the Holy Spirit changes everything. And that's really what happens, isn't it? When you, when you believe and trust in Jesus and the Holy Spirit begins to work in your life, then you are changed and you're changed from the, the inside out and your desires begin to change and your whole life begins to change. Now, a lot of these things that we're going to speak about tonight are really about character and sometimes when, when you become a Christian, some of, you know, th there's a testimony of someone in the Alpha Course who, you know, was a drug user, put their faith in Jesus and overnight they stopped using drugs. I think there's someone else in the Alpha Course who, who speaks about how, you know, uh, they swore all the time. I certainly, I, I, I know someone whose testimony would be this. Uh, they swore all the time, put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus and then overnight suddenly they are changed. But the reality is quite often when you put your faith and trust in Jesus, even though you are justified, straight away so your salvation is secure before God and when God looks on you what does he see he sees the righteousness of Christ so whilst justification if we want to put it in those terms is, is straight away it is immediate the process of of sanctification that is be, being changed into the likeness of Christ takes a lifetime we never, we never particularly, we never, you know, arrive at our destination until uh, we will be in, in the Lord's presence. And so uh, there are certain things in our life that we will, will, will take time to change as the Holy Spirit works in our heart. what we need to notice is that there is a difference between justification on the one hand and sanctification on the other and sanctification is a lifelong process as the Holy Spirit begins to work in our hearts and in our lives now what Paul speaks about in Ephesians chapter 2 he's really speaking about uh, justification that we are justified by faith faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is not to do with our works but then we reach Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 and we see that even though works don't save us that we are actually created by God to do good works that is created in advance for us to do i.e. the Christian life is not a purposeless life. It is a life that is full of purpose. You see, the Christian life is not about resting on our laurels and thinking, well, you know, I've believed and trusted in Jesus, therefore I've arrived at my destination. But rather, we believe and trust in Jesus and then the Holy Spirit begins to work in our life and he works on our character. He changes us within and he begins to show us the good works that he's created in advance for us to do. If we 
haven't been a Christian for a long time, then we would understand that uh, our experience would be that as the Holy Spirit works within us, then our desires begin to change. And things that were or seemed to be important before uh, no longer seem as important. Therefore, it may be, for example, that you went to work before and what was your aim of going to work? Well, your aim to, to go to work was uh, perhaps to, to earn money, uh, first and foremost. Uh, to earn money, perhaps to get a bit richer, uh, to maybe afford a house, to afford a car, to provide uh, for your family. Uh, these are all important things, don't get me wrong. But when you become a Christian, you realise that your desires and your purpose begins to change because you see things in a in a different light you see things through 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 Christ's eyes rather than your own eyes and so when you go to work for example your purpose is not just to um, earn money or to have some job satisfaction but rather your purpose is to do your job for the glory of God and your purpose in your job might be to, to spend time with your work colleagues and to witness to them, to show them the love of God. Before you didn't have that purpose. Your only purpose really was to, uh, to work, to get money, to go home, to have rest and recreation. But suddenly you have this change in your life when the, the Holy Spirit's come within you, your desires begin to change and therefore you maybe begin to pray for your work colleagues and you want them also to come and to know the Lord Jesus uh, for themselves and so as you trust in the Lord Jesus you begin to, to learn that, that God has a plan and a purpose for your life now that might not come immediately it says elsewhere in Paul's letters that you know we're, we're to remain when we when we're converted we're to remain in the place uh, where we were converted so just because you converted doesn't mean that you necessarily quit your job uh, and suddenly become a missionary or a minister or whatever it might be or, or go into full-time Christian work it, you're to remain where you are because God has called you to be in the place where you are and unless God calls you out of that then you're to remain exactly where you are but instead of just doing that job for yourself you're instead doing it for God's glory and God's glory alone. And so what I want you to see is that, and sometimes we get this wrong. You see, sometimes we can fall into the trap, as I spoke about earlier, of thinking it's our works that save us. But rather, the way around it should be is we are saved for good works. That's the way it should be. And so when the Holy Spirit comes into our life, when we put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus, then our character begins to change. And so we begin slowly as we learn more, as we spend time in God's word, as we spend time in prayer, we, we begin to become more Christ-like in our attitudes. And the Holy Spirit will prompt us within as to those things that, that are displeasing to him. And he will show us uh, the path of righteousness, uh, the way that we, that we should be going. But also, as we begin to change, we also find that our purpose begins to change. Because rather than just pleasing ourselves, our whole life becomes about pleasing God. It's about taking our hands off the steering wheel of our life and rather letting God lead the way and we follow in his purpose. And that is a really exciting thing. If you're, if you're not a believer, non-believers can't, can't really understand this. People think that Christianity is so boring, but really... There's something just so exhilarating in saying, God, I want you to take control. God, I want you to lead me. And God, every day, as I spend time in prayer, I want you to, to lead me to love people more. Uh, I want you to lead me to, 
to, to speak about you more that others might come uh, into the kingdom and what an amazing privilege it is when you pray for other people and you begin to get those opportunities uh, to witness for God that other people might come into the kingdom and so what I want us to think about tonight is really those two things I want us to think about how you know so often we can fall back uh, into the way of works can't we and thinking that it's our works that save us but really we always have to be reminded that it's grace it is grace that saves us and that Jesus death on the cross at Calvary is absolutely sufficient to pay for all our sin past present and future also we don't need to fall into the trap of thinking well you know now I've believed in Jesus will I just carry on with my life as it was before because you cannot because as the Pope's preacher said the Holy Spirit changes nothing we are still the same person that we were, were before but the Holy Spirit changes everything because he works in our hearts our desires completely change and suddenly we want to honor Christ with all we say with all that we do we want to live to his glory his honor his praise and so that's why Paul says in Ephesians 2 verse 10 that we have been created for the works that God good works that God has created in advance for us to do you see we have to trust that God is sovereign that he knew he predestined that you were going to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and he's a plan and a purpose for your life so I want you just to think tonight if you're really tempted in your life or you realize you know I've fallen back into trying to earn my way with God well let's stop let's take a moment and let's just remember all that Jesus has done on the cross salvation is completely about grace but also if you've come tonight and you're thinking to yourself do you know something I just feel purposeless in my life and I don't really know where my life is going well I want you to, to tell you something that as the old Rick Warren book said that a lot of people were into in the early 2000s when you believe in Jesus you have a purpose driven life because God has created good works for you to do and if we don't know that in our Christian walk with God then maybe we just need to spend a bit of time in his word a bit of time in prayer to, to focus and to remember you know God has saved us for a purpose he's not just saved us so that we can do our own thing that we can you know just indulge our own desires he's saved us so that we can do good works for his glory and what a wondrous amazing thing that is what an amazing God that we have that he would save us first and foremost and he would give us these good works to do for his glory changes our perspective completely sometimes we wonder you know why am I doing the job that I'm doing why am I in the house that I am? Why am I in the street I am? Why do I live in a place like, like West Kilbride? Well, let me tell you something. It's for a time such as this. Because God wants to use you for his glory, for his honour, for his praise. And what a privilege it is to be able to do that. Now, we've spent a lot of time reflecting uh, tonight I hope that has been uh, an encouragement to you an encouragement at least to to go home to get into God's Word to pray to remember what salvation is all about and to look for those opportunities to do what God has called you to do in your life Now it's been brilliant to bring you down the beach uh, for 
uh, this little video reflection this evening. I love coming down the beach. I, I come down more often these days. It's good. I, I like coming down with the boys or with Anna, but I also just like coming down for myself to get a bit of exercise, a bit of uh, fresh air. Uh, but also, I think it's a very biblical thing to go for a walk. What, what did Jesus spend his time doing? He's often walking, he's going from place to place. Uh, where did he spend a lot of his time? Down at the beach, down beside uh, the Sea of Galilee, uh, traveling uh, across, traveling back uh, on the boat. Uh, he spent a lot of time uh, with people, engaging with people, walking together, uh, eating together uh, as well. And I encourage you, you know, maybe it's not the easiest time of year to do this, but you know, as you reflect on what we've thought about tonight, why not, you know, say to someone who's there with you tonight, or to say to a friend, uh, you know, why don't we go for a walk? Let's chew over uh, these things. Let's chew over uh, what God's purpose might be uh, for me in my life. Shall we just finish uh, with a word of prayer together? Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, and we thank you that salvation is all about grace that is grasped by faith. And we thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done in the Lord Jesus. We thank you that we don't need to impress you. We thank you that we don't need to add to our salvation. Because, Lord God, we recognize that Jesus has done it all. He has paid the price for our sin. And therefore, when we believe and trust in him, we have nothing to fear. But Lord God, we pray that when we believe and trust in Jesus, they'll not fall into the trap of thinking that that's the end of our journey in terms of our faith. Because we recognise, Lord God, that it's just the beginning. That you have created us as your people to do good works which you have prepared in advance for us to do. And Father... We pray that as the Holy Spirit works in our lives, changing our character, sanctifying us, that we would understand the good works that we are called to do, perhaps in our place of work, in our neighbourhood, in our community, in our street, among our family. Lord God, help us to spend time with you and help us to understand the purpose that you have given us. For we pray this, in Jesus' name, and for his sake. Amen. Well, again, apologies for not being with you uh, again tonight, but may you know God's blessing this evening uh, for the rest of your service as the praise group uh, leads you just in the end of our time of praise uh, and as you enjoy some fellowship together. God bless you all.